I wanted to talk about the ideal time to go to sleep, the ideal time to have your last meal in the evening or the afternoon. I'm going to use Psalm 104 out of the Bible because it speaks about the ideal time to go to sleep. So Psalm 104 verse 20, you bring on darkness and it is night. When all the beasts of the forests stir, the lions roar for prey, seeking their food from the Almighty. When the sun rises, they come home and couch in their dens. Man then goes out to his work, to his labor, until the evening. All right, that's verse 20 through 23. As it states, and how, how nature has arranged it, is that animals look for food at night. And a little bit before sunrise, they go back to wherever they're staying, in the bushes, in a cave, in the forest. And then man wakes up, and he goes to his work during the daytime. So, of course, how could you do gardening and farming and animal husbandry and everything else we do, you know, in the darkness? Now, how does this fit in with our natural time for sleep? I know there's people that buy melatonin um, supplements so they could sleep, but they really don't need to do that because there's the pineal gland in our brains, right in the center of our brain, that produces the hormone melatonin when it's dark. Something to do with the darkness hitting our eyes and then it goes to the center of the brain and it stimulates the release of melatonin. We do have melatonin all day long, but in small amounts. So more is produced in darkness. Now, um, what does melatonin have to do with health? Well, people who work at night, meaning they do not sleep at night, they sleep in the daytime, have a 60% chance higher risk of cancer than people who work in the daytime and sleep at night. Now, Melatonin causes drowsiness so we could fall asleep, but it also has something to do with decreasing or preventing the growth of tumors. So that's the connection between having melatonin at night and avoiding cancer. It stops the growth of tumors. Now, um, People who do take the supplement of melatonin, there is side effects. It's very difficult to get the right dose, and, and it's unnecessary anyway. Um, also food. Food affects how, how well we sleep, not just the time we sleep at night. By the way, melatonin is produced approximately between 9 p.m. and 2 a.m. So those are the ideal hours to be sleeping. Now people have asked me uh, when should they stop eating at night? Uh, should it be an hour before sleep? Uh, three hours before sleep? Well, that depends on what you eat. If you have a large quantity of food and high fat food, it's going to take longer to digest. It might take four or five hours. If you're going to have something low fat and a smaller quantity, let's say yogurt and fruit, I mean, I think that would be out of your system, the digestive system in about an hour. So basically, the longer you go without food before sleep, the better. You'll sleep better because digestion takes a tremendous amount of energy. And why shouldn't your whole body be resting? I mean, the only thing that's not resting at night seems to be our brains because, you know, we have all kinds of dreams. And in our dreams, you know, we're very, very active. It's like uh, watching a movie where we're the star. Anyway, um, think about these things. Uh, there's all kinds of statistics online you could find about it. 
And uh, when I worked in the health department in um, Southwest Florida, we had a visit and a lecture from a doctor who ran a sleep clinic. So my information is not just from online, it's from uh, practice, and it's also from that seminar we had from that, that doctor. I think it, whatever problem you have, you could find it in scripture, some solution to it. And um, no one knows your health better than you. So try to analyze what you're doing if you're having any problem. Ask me any questions. I love questions. And um, today's a day of rest.